On this Sunday, when our Lord told the lepers to show themselves to the priests, to get, them, uh, to get from them the declaration that they were now healthy and ready to return to Jewish society, I wanted to talk to you about some important points concerning the Catholic doctrine. The particular subject I chose for today is what is often uh, referred as Fenism, named uh, after the late Jesuit priest Father Leonard Feeney of Boston. In our times, uh, it is very easy for sincere traditional Catholics to become supporters of Father Feeney because they, that falsely that is, think that Father Feeney preached bravely the dogma outside the church there is no salvation. With this doctrine, the traditional Catholics, of course, have no problem. But the problem is that the church has defined for us who those people are who are inside the Catholic Church. And to this question, Father Fini gave the wrong answer when he wrote, it is now baptism of water or damnation. If you do not desire that water, you cannot be justified. And if you do not get it, you cannot be saved. The Catholic doctrine of the baptism of blood and desire would be the subject of another sermon. Today I merely wish to point out why this movement is so re remarkable in American traditionalist movement. Indeed, it has never been deeply rooted in Europe, but resides mostly in USA, and there are reasons for this. First of all, the movement called Fenism has its beginnings in America. The Catholic Church in 1949 condemned the teachings of Father Feeney with the approval of the Pope. Since Father Feeney was teaching in the Archdiocese of Boston, Cardinal Marchetti Selvaciani, who was the secretary of the Holy Office, sent this decision to Archbishop Richard Cushing of Boston. Therefore, this decision of the Catholic Church is often referred as the Marchetti Selvaggiani letter. In condemning the Father Fini's teachings, the Holy Office, which is the highest tribunal of the doctrinal orthodoxy and headed by the Pope himself, said that the Church has always and never will cease to preach the doctrine of outside the Church, there is no salvation. On a side note, this is exactly what the Church of Vatican II did when it preached that the other churches have not been excluded from salvation and that God uses them as means of salvation. The Vatican II Church has ceased to preach this precious doctrine outside the church there is no salvation. So this church obviously cannot be the church which our Lord found. The Holy Office further said in its decision that the only authority which can define who are members of the Catholic Church is the Church herself. And this is why the controversy about Father Fini is much more than a doctrinal battle. The teaching office in the Church is not given to private individuals. The commission to the apostles was, go ye into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. Notice also the order, one who believes and is baptized, he is saved, but only he who refuses to believe believeth not, will be lost, not he who is baptized not. The apostles are ordered to preach, to teach, and it is to their preaching and teaching the intellectual assent must be given. And where such assent is refused, anathema is pronounced, 
and damnation is threatened. On the other hand, the supporters of Father Fini rely on that Calvinist and Puritan tradition which takes unto an individual man to pile up souls in the fiery pit of hell, since only hope for salvation there lies to those individuals who have received water baptism, the vast majority of people outside Europe and America have been doomed to everlasting damnation, while in this system the chosen members of God's elect can look happily to their reward in heaven. An English Puritan writer named Isaac Watts put uh, this view of election best in his poem Heaven and Hell, which he wrote to children, There is beyond the sky a a heaven of joy and love, and holy children, when they die, go to that world above. There is a dreadful hell and everlasting pains. Their sinners must with devils dwell in darkness, fire, and chains. But the Catholic Church, on the other hand, has taken to herself to proclaim certain souls to be in heaven, in the process of canonization of the saints. But she has never taken unto her duty to proclaim that any single named individual, whether baptized or not, is in hell. Like our Lord said, some people, they do not believe, and they are condemned. This we know, and many saints have seen private revelations about the damned souls. But unlike Calvinism, the Catholic Church herself has always seen her duty to pray for all deceased individuals, because it is to the judgment seat of God and not ours upon which every individual soul is called after his death. When the Holy Office, citing both the reigning Pope, that was Pius XII, and his predecessors, that also those who, without their own fault, cannot be enrolled to the membership of the Church through baptism, and they can be united to her by desire, the supporters of Father Fini started their rebellion. And the Church answered to this rebellion by excommunication, declaring anathema to anyone who would now or in future hold these doctrines. So even though battle against Phineism is, of course, a doctrinal battle, you should be aware that it is also part of our battle against the false notions about the structure of the Catholic Church. Remember what was said, the apostles and their successors are ordered to preach, to teach. To their preaching and teaching, your religious assent must be given, and who refuses to do that, anathema is pronounced, and damnation is threatened. After the excommunication of Father Fini, one of his supporters shouted in their Boston Common Meeting, Archbishop Cushing stuck his head out in heresy against us, Our Lady Scourge of Heretics punish him. Father Fini himself went even further when he told the Archbishop Archbishop against his face that the Marchetti Selvaggiani letter presented outright heresy. Here you can see how Finiism was in its way a prototype of everything what has gone wrong in the traditional Catholic movement as we ourselves know it. On the one hand, the Fenians, then the supporters of the Society of St. Pius X, and those of the Resistance, they all condemned the heretics, but they still claim that those who promote the heresy are true shepherds of the Church. The false resistance position is that one is allowed to resist the hierarchy promoting heresies, while the Catholic position is that whoever promotes heresies cannot cannot be member of the Catholic hierarchy. Just like the Vatican II era, also the times of Reformation 
were a time of much confusion among Catholics, and to eliminate the confusion, Pope Paul IV, who reigned during the height of the Reformation, issued a decree where he said that those clergymen and rulers who fail in their duty to maintain the Catholic faith They sin more gravely than the rest because they lead countless other souls to damnation as well. Therefore, the Pope enacted, determined, decreed, and defined, which means he said this infallibly, that if any Pope has deviated from the Catholic faith or fallen into some heresy, his promotion to the papacy is invalid, even if it would be uncontested and he would be elected by all the cardinals. And he defined also that it would, all, it would not be able for this false pope to acquire validity through the acceptance of the office, and that his promotion would not be held as partially legitimate in any way. So for a Catholic, it is impossible to regard anyone who promotes heresy as a true, legitimate shepherd, the successor of the apostles. This is the center of the whole unacum controversy, which really is no controversy at all, but the test of where the true mass of the true church nowadays is said. Never let anyone to make you believe that this is only an issue of praying for the Pope, and for his conversion. One is allowed to pray for Bergoglio and for his conversion, as one can pray for any other person in the world. But in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, you do not pray for the Pope. You pray together with the Pope. That's what the whole phrase unacum means, that you are together with the Pope, Or put it more plainly, you are one with the Pope. Whenever a Catholic attends the Mass, which places the name uh, of, the, um, uh, of the Pope in the canon, he by his very action recognizes that this man is his father, and much more than that, he is his Holy Father. And Holy Father just like your heavenly father, whose vicar the Pope is, could never lead you to believe something which is against the Catholic faith. Before I became a seminarian, I once visited a community which has a traditional mass, but holds the Fenite doctrine and is in communion with the Vatican II Church. One of the members of this community told me how he and his companions go out to the streets and preach to the people. And when the people, hearing their message, point out to him, and perfectly correctly in my view, that, but this isn't what your Pope is teaching, he said that to this he just has to answer that my Pope is wrong. Can you imagine a Catholic saying that? You, you have, who have been served by our St. Gertrude, the great clergy, for years, could you really think that a person who answers that my Pope is wrong is a Catholic? There is no such thing as a heretic Pope, because the words heresy and papacy are mutually exclusive. One could just as well say a Lutheran Pope or an atheist Pope or a Muslim pope. It makes no sense. And this is why Theonism is wrong in such a wicked way, not only because it is heresy, which would be subject of another sermon, but mainly because it is a rebellion, a rebellion against the author authority established by Christ. One can include under this rebellion also the other branches of the traditionalist movement who promote this false rebellion, the Society of St. Pius X and the Resistance, for example. It is a movement of picking and choosing, giving praises and obedience to the hierarchy when one hears what one likes and degrading and mocking it when one hears things 
which are displeasing. It is, in practice at least, if not in words, the rejection of the hierarchy established by Christ himself, and in this way it is comparable to a treason. You might remember from history that a man named Brutus, who was a trusted friend of Caesar, the master of Rome, eventually formed a conspiracy which assassinated this popular leader of Rome. In Shakespeare's play, Julius Caesar, after killing his master, Brutus enters the forum to face the citizens and says, As Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. It was a rotten defense to Brutus, and it is a rotten defense for a Catholic. Your duty, dear faithful, in regard to the church, is identical with that which you owe to your heavenly father, uh, and, uh, and also uh, in identical with that which you owe to your earthly father and your earthly mother. You must honor them as you honor the church by never showing them any disrespect. Neither should you listen to those who, sp who speak ill of the church and rep her representatives, the clergy, and you should try to put a stop to these kind of conversations as far as it is in your power to do so. After all, would you listen with indifference if your earthly father or your earthly mother were slandered, ridiculed, dragged, to, so to speak, through the mud? If you would act like this, you would not deserve the name of son or daughter. No matter what kind of a Catholic one claims to be, a liberal, a conservative, a traditional, one must recognize that an image where faithful sheep are in search of the lost shepherd is a very grim image and totally alien to the words of Jesus to St. Peter, the first pope, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Whatsoever thou shalt bind upon earth, it shall be bound also in the heavens, and whatsoever thou shalt loose in earth, it shall be loosed also in the heavens. How could a denial of obedience to such high office as papacy be anything but a treason. St. John Chrysostom once wrote about those who recognized the priests but refused their submission. Truly it is hypocrisy to kiss the hand of the priest in public so that all may see it, run to his door when he need baptism, and then afterwards, at home or in the street, heap insults upon priests and allow others to speak evil of those who are the authors and ministers of so much good. If he is such an evil father, how is it that you find him worthy of belief and the minister of such great sacraments? If he seems in your eyes a true minister and worthy of belief, how is it that you allow others to criticize him do not stop their mouths and do not detest the, those lips which speak such evil, so that you may receive a great reward from God. We, dear faithful, like the Phenites, we are in rebellion against the hierarchy, but we are in rebellion against false hierarchy. To this, these all controversies among the traditionalist movement culminate, is one in rebellion against hierarchy, or is one in rebellion against false hierarchy? And Fenianism, just like this other society and resistant position, is non-Catholic because it is rebellion against the hierarchy, which they themselves say is legitimate Catholic hierarchy. As he was valiant, I honor him, but as he was ambitious, I slew him. Never think this is a trivial matter. It is a matter concerning your own salvation. 
the aforesaid Marchetti Selva Gianni letter, which I've heard the Fenites mockingly referred as the Macaroni Spaghetti letter, talks the, these grave words to all Catholics, which are no laughing matter. Therefore, no one will be saved who, knowing the Church to have been divinely established by Christ, nevertheless refuses to submit to the Church or withholds obedience from the Roman pontiff, the vicar of Christ on earth. For a Catholic, there is never a question of disobeying the true shepherds of the Church, just like uh, for a citizen could never betray his country or son or daughter would disobey his parents. Our Lord himself said, If you love me, keep my commandments. The only way to be a traditional Catholic is to give resistance to false hierarchy, the one which is not Catholic. A true Catholic can never oppose a Catholic hierarchy, but it is to the enemies of the Church, uh, of whom our Lord has uh, said that he will eventually triumph, and over these enemies he will gain a great victory. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.